Partnerships are vital to our global outreach, enabling us to take the love and hope of Jesus Christ to those who need it most. Our Boots on the Ground Partnership Program physically ministers to those in desperate situations all over the world. The Israel Partnership furthers Kim's legacy of outreach to Israel and Jewish people worldwide. We invite you to become a partner today. Join us today and be part of a community that inspires hope, brings restoration to life and often healing from the past. Together we can make a difference and we thank you for your ongoing support. something on their face, do you think? Hello everyone, welcome to House of Destiny. This is your boy, Dr. Charlie C.J. Jordan, a.k.a. Charles of the Ritz. Welcome to Perspectives of the Prophetic. Guys, this week we're going to talk about the fear of the Lord, because I truly believe that we are in a time now that God is about to move and the fear of God is, is going to be released because the, you see, this is what God said to me. He said this to me. He said, there's too much attention upon man and the fear of man because of what man has done with administering and distributing so much fear. If you listen to a lot of the media and you listen to what's going on across social media, there's nothing but fear. There's nothing but turmoil. All of this that is happening. Now, here's the key, everyone. Here's what's interesting. God has allowed it. God has allowed it. Why? Because in a prophetic utterance, when he said this through my mentor, our prophet, Prophet Kim Clement, he said, I placed a veil over this nation and I did it. Why? Because in times of distress, faith grows. So what is happening now, everyone, that I believe that now we have gotten to a point and to a stage in our walk with God that our faith has elevated to the place where God says, now my remnant, my remnant is ready for the day of the Lord is at hand. And I believe this is what's happening. There's so much impending danger upon the earth today. So much, so much division, words of accusation. I mean, all of this that's going on, God has allowed. Guys, look at all of the exposure that God spoke about. And we are seeing it taking place right now. He spoke these words back in 2014. He spoke certain words back in 2007, 2008. The events that are happening now, he told us years ago, he's prepared us. So this message is to make sure that each and every one of us Continue to seek him so that we won't be blinded and we won't be taken out by the spirit of fear. Because the spirit of fear is what's been operating in this land and across this earth. So God wants our faith to grow. That's the reason why he has allowed all of this to take place. Now, God is about to move, everybody. He is truly about to move. And the fear and the day of the Lord is at hand. Do you guys remember these prophetic words about wars and impending wars that's going to take place that God spoke through our prophet? Okay, back in 2012, do you remember this word? Listen to this. But fear struck me. This is what the prophet saw. This is what he felt. It was an open vision. But fear struck me for the first time. Was this nuclear? Was this atomic? Was this that that I was feeling? What was this that I was feeling? Was I interceding on behalf of Israel and America? I believe I was, first of all. At that point, there were multiple visions, and the question seemed to arise constantly. Armageddon, the slaughter of humanity, an atomic war that no one wanted, but that no one had the wisdom to avoid. I need to say that to you again, and I want you to listen to it because this is what I heard. I'm getting the slaughter of humanity, 
an atomic war that no one wanted, but which no one had the wisdom to avoid. Guys, how many times have you heard circulating throughout the media and throughout social media, the talk that's going on around the country and the countries of this world, that there's an impending nuclear exchange that could happen. This is real, everybody. This is what the prophet saw. Let me continue. What were we to pray for then? And then God said, for wisdom and the spirit of the Lord, that is when he was showing me, or that is what he was showing me. He was showing me a weapon that nobody knows about, or perhaps they are ignoring it because it's not. Now, it stops there. It's not. He paused. And then he said this. And then I heard these words. This is not that time. Armageddon, this is not that time. You can receive peace today at this very moment. So let's stop right there. God says this is the plan of the enemy. And man would not have a way to stop it. Why? Because the fear of man does what? Brings a snare. Because men that are controlled by the spirit of fear, they have no answer. They have no solution. Because fear. Fear from that spirit has taken over. But God said, what should you pray for? Wisdom. This is what we've been praying for. This is why all of this that has happened, everyone, this needed to happen. The 2020 elections, all of this confusion, all of this stuff that's going on, guys, it had to happen. This is what needed to happen. Why? Because there's a remnant of believers like you and I that have gathered. We've, we've said enough is enough. We're going to seek the Father. We're going to know exactly everything that he is doing, what he's going to do. And we have been positioned very strategically, very strategically to manifest the kingdom of almighty God. So let's go on. You can receive peace today at this very moment. This is not that time for the slaughter of humanity. The vision of wickedness and impending danger is due to some device hidden in a place unknown to the present intelligence. That's what I have to tell you. And maybe even this has been ignored. So in other words, oh, that's not important. This device, this well, whatever, this, that's not important. But apparently it is, everyone. This weapon is in a human mind, and the weapon that is in this human mind came to me when I saw some alphabetical letters. I saw some letters. At first, I thought it was A to Z. This is a puzzle to me right now. But God, but God almost said to me, <laughs> I like when he said, but God almost said to me, focus now on this so the mystery can be unfolded. The letters were A and Q. That's all I saw. And he said, that's where it's at, Kim. Then I saw Russia. I saw Pakistan. I saw a connection. That's all I saw there. I remember that, but I didn't say it. It's important for you to take note of. Go out and research it. So this was a vision that the prophet saw. This is what he saw. Do you guys remember this word? This came June 3rd, 2015. Now I'm laying this foundation here because I, I, we, we need to understand what God is saying here, that he wants us to be positioned because God is about to move now. God is about to, uh, uh, to move and the fear of the Lord or uh, the day of the Lord is at hand. And so people in the world, they don't understand and know the fear of the Lord. Because when God starts to move, it's going to shake some things up. And I'm going to get to scripture to prove what I'm talking about. But let's look at this word from June 3rd, 2015. This is what God said through the prophet. You've shown me, Lord, how the enemy has once again planned something but this time, it is completely different. It is not like 9-11. There is nothing like it. This is the most strange infiltration that shall come up on your screens. It shall come up on you in your movie houses. Okay? Have you guys noticed? I know around here, okay, my phone, my computer, all these things have been strange. Have you heard 
the rhetoric of a cyber attack from China. This stuff is real, everybody. This stuff is real. God has allowed it. Are you ready? Because, see, we know the fear of the Lord. We understand the fear of the Lord. Okay? We have been positioned because many will be struck with terror. But we will bring them peace. We will bring them joy. We will bring them righteousness. For such is the kingdom of God. Let's continue. This is the most strange infiltration that shall come up on your screens. It shall come up on you and your movie houses. It shall come up on the places of comfort and pleasure. And they shall infiltrate and they shall say, we'll even black them out. We will even cause them to be so terrorized because there is darkness in one section and darkness in another section. Long Island, Babylon, New York, all of these regions, we will blacken it out and then we will cause them to hear and understand that we are in charge. This is the plan of the enemy of you and I. This is the plan of the kingdom of darkness and those that have sold themselves out to the kingdom of darkness. This is their plan. But listen to God's plan. You will not do this as you plan. But the spirit of the Lord says, even as my prophet prays and gathers the people together and the people pray and make declaration that there is only one God and that eternal God shall destroy the power and the plans of mere mortal man. This day, Lord, I call to you, bring down the forces in the region of New York. Let me say this on this on this broadcast right now. Lord God, we call to you. Bring down the forces over New York that have planned to do this. Bring down the forces over D.C. that have planned to do this. Bring down the forces over America that they have planned to do this. Bring them down over all the earth. Bring them down. They must and they shall be beneath our feet, O oh God. So we ask you this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. You see, this is what the prophet said. We have gathered. We are on this program. Those of you that are listening to me right now on this program, you know what we're doing? We're doing exactly what the prophet saw back then. We're doing it now. We're doing it now. Remember, we're somewhere in the future, y'all. And we look so much better than all the garbage that's going on. Okay? So bring the forces in the region of New York and bring them down. And as we go there and we stand there, declare the will of the Lord and expose the very forces of hell. This is what we're doing today. This I pray today for this nation. And I call to you to bring your life, your breath, Upon us, in the name of Yahshua, I thank you for doing it, Lord God. That is what the Lord showed the prophet. That is what we prayed on that day. And this is what we are praying today. Are you ready for the fear of the Lord to overtake this earth? For this is the season for it. We, the people of God, know and understand the fear of the Lord. OK, we know it for we are here to help those that don't, because when it happens, when God really begins to move. Great fear is going to strike many people. Great fear is going to strike many people. But we we are ready. Come on. We are ready. We are well able. We are very strategically placed and positioned. Come on, everybody. Let's be bold. Let's be steadfast in our faith in what God has shown us, have told us, and how he has anointed and called us. We are ready. Let's go to scripture. Let's go to scripture because I'm, because I'm going to break down this scripture that is so beautiful. There is so much in the Bible that speaks about the fear of the Lord. But I found this scripture to be the one that I really want to lay the foundation of this message on. Okay. It's Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10. This is what it says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy one is understanding. So Solomon wrote that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, all wisdom, understanding the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? I broke down that word fear. Okay. In this scripture. And it has terror. It has 
fright, afraid, connected to it. But in the essence or in the context of this uh, uh, scripture, God is saying that fear means respect, reverence, piety, and revered. That's what the fear of the Lord means to those of us that are in Christ. You see, we tap into the revelation of the fear of the Lord. It is respect, it's reverence, it's piety, and it's revered. Remember when Jesus told us after this manner, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. You know, how it would be thy name is a reference, is a is a, a cry out to God in 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 knowing who he is, that he is God Almighty, God El Shaddai, the, the most high God, the one and only God. You see, that's what the fear of the Lord means to a believer. Okay? I looked up that word piety. You know what it means? It means marked by a shown reverence for God and devotion to divine worship. It clearly denotes the following. Okay? Piety. It clearly denotes the following. It is the evidence of sincere faith. It is a devotion to God through our actions, not just thoughts or words. So Solomon is clearly saying true fear of God with us, with believers, isn't terror, but sincere faith, devotion, and worship through action, not just thoughts and words. Do you remember that song we used to sing? Faith is action. There's a faith unusual living inside of me. Faith is action. Man, we used to sing that song and the place would go nuts because faith is action. It's action. It's not nothing that lies dormant. It's not nothing that lies still. No. Uh-uh. Faith is action. Faith moves. You see, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, okay, Faith the size of must, you know, a mustard seed. You can do mighty things with that faith. If you can say, if you have that kind of faith, you can say unto any mountain, not just some mountains, but you can say unto any mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and doubt not that the very thing that you are believing for and asking for, it shall be, it will obey your command. I call it the fig tree principle. You see, we have the authority to walk in this kind of faith. So sincere of the fear of the Lord with us is a sincere faith and reverence of God for God and a divine worship. It's worship that, that says, God, I put aside everything that is worldly. I put aside everything that has happened to me today that falls short of your glory. I'm coming into your presence with thanksgiving and worship and with, and with all supplication, giving you praise, giving you honor and giving you all the glory for I am alive because you are alive in me. If it wasn't for his life in us, we would be dead. Amen. So that's the fear of the Lord. Okay. That's the fear of the Lord. You see, faith is action, right? You know what James says about faith? Okay. About faith. James chapter two, verse 26 says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Do you see? Faith is action. And that's who we are. So the fear of the Lord consists of that to those that are believers. Now, here's an example of the fear of the Lord that gripped the city when Jesus came in and did a powerful miracle. But his disciples and everyone that was there who had witnessed the miracles and the signs and wonders of Jesus Okay, they knew what was up. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah. They knew that Jesus was a cut above everyone else that had come before them. They knew it. So they understood the fear of the Lord. Let's go to Luke chapter 7, 
verses 11 through 17. Let's read it. Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin. The open coffin. So people are seeing this dead young man in the coffin. He's dead. He's gone. <laughs> he's, he's gone, y'all. Okay, he's dead. Jesus didn't touch him. He touched the coffin. Okay. And those who carried him stood still. I said, man, well, man, what is this dude doing? What's up? Well, what, wait a minute. What, what is touching the car? What are you doing? And he said, young man, I said to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak. Now, let me stop right there. Now, I can tell you what would happen in the hood. I'm going to tell you right now. This was a black funeral and, and, and something like this happened. I'm telling you, man, we are up and we are about to fly out of there, man. We, we gone, y'all. We like, what, what the heck is this? What, what is this? Okay. Let's continue. And he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all. The same word, Greek word that is used here in this scripture is the same word. That is connected to the Hebrew meaning, and it has fear, it has terror, it had a Fred connected to it. So let me just keep it real, guys. You know a guy that's been dead for several days, all right? They have in the funeral, and there's an open coffin. They taken him to bury the guy. And here comes this guy by the name of Jesus. First time in this city, y'all. First time. Now, maybe they have known about him, but this is the first time that he came into this region. But this wasn't the first time that something like this happened in this reason, uh, region. And I'll get to that real soon. OK, so I'm trying to I'm trying to hurry up here because I don't want to be too long. But think about it. The guy's lying there. He's dead. And Jesus said, rise up. And he rises up. Let me tell you something, man. That struck fear in a lot of people. A lot of people were afraid instantly afraid because they had never seen anything like this. They had never seen it. And then, so when he set up, then fear came up on all, but then they, and then, but then the word said, and they glorified God saying a great prophet has risen up among us. Let me just keep it real. Like I said, you know, the first time that this happened or when that man first raised up, let me tell you something, man, the fear that they saw or experienced was, oh my God, this dead man is alive. They, people freaked out, but his disciples and those that knew that God was moving, they understood the fear fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord came into the region the fear of the Lord the reverence so they understood it and guess what they were able to calm everybody down if they didn't say anything their presence in being calm whatever but that fear that could have turned into a, a commotion all of a sudden became reverence to God because they said, and they glorify God saying, a great prophet has risen up among us and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding regions. Guys, I'm just keeping it real. That's why I love that show, The Chosen, because if you look at that, uh, 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 that series, The Chosen, man, the directors and the, uh, and, and the writers, they have really kept this on a real, not a super religious, super like all oh, above the natural. Of course, God operates and Jesus was operating supernaturally, but we were in a natural setting. They were in a natural setting, just like we are in a natural setting. You see somebody rise up out of a coffin, and especially here in America, he's been dead, and the, and the coffin is open, and then all of a sudden that guy rises up like that. That's going to strike fear in people, the fear of man, the fear of death. But you see, death has truly lost its, its sting in the presence of the fear of the Lord. 
This is what we have. We have an understanding of God's fear, which is reverence, piety, the glory of his kingdom. That's the fear that is coming up on the earth, everyone. And we have been positioned. We have been positioned to administer and to bring peace when God begins to move. That's why we can't be full of religion, everybody. We can't be full of, of, of religion that says, wait a minute, that doesn't seem to be like God. No, 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 that can't be God. Let me tell you something. God is sovereign. He's going to move how he wants to move. We have to discern. That's why, please, I got to say it again. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Read it and become it. Become it. Okay? Present your body daily as a living sacrifice, even if it's only five minutes. Do this. For in doing this, you will renew your mind. And you won't conform to the world which is full of the fear of man. But your mind will be transformed and you will be able to discern God in every area. Whether it's his good, his acceptable or perfect will, you'll be able to discern it. If anything that is happening in front of you doesn't have those three attributes of God, then you know what to do with it. To cast it down, put it underneath your feet. Okay, to put it underneath your feet. And like I said, in that re uh, region, Nain, back in the Old Testament, there was a prophet by the name of Elisha. Remember the Shudamite woman? When her son died and Elisha came back and, and laid upon him and prayed and that boy came back to life, that was the same area that that happened in. When Jesus went to Nain, that was the same area where the Shudamite woman was. So this was a region that had experienced this before. Man, I just love God, okay? So the world and the unsaved doesn't have this understanding of the fear of the Lord. They don't have it, but we have it. We have the revelation of the fear of the Lord. And now we have keys to bind and loose. And whenever the spirit of fear comes, we can bind it. We can bind it here on earth and it's bound in the heavens. It can't operate, everyone. This is the season. Okay. So God is prepared to move everyone for the world is truly about to experience the fear of the Lord. I'm going to end with this. Donna H. shared a, a, a TBN clip the other day. She found an old TBN clip from 1996. And, and, and in this clip, Paul and Jan Crouch, Crouch was interviewing Prophet Kim and Lance Wallnow. And they begin to ask him about a revival. I want you guys to check out what Kim saw with this great end time revival. Guys, this is where we are. Kim saw it. He saw this. I want you to check this out, okay? Check it out. Or says, run, the rain is coming. Right, exactly. You know, exactly. And, and nobody's feeling the rain. But he's saying it. And, and what I like about this, and people have condemned me. People have said to me, my eyes are too soft. I, I don't have a hardness like the prophet should be hard. <laughs> well, I, I don't understand that because the Holy Spirit convicts of unrighteousness. What right do I have to come in and tell people this is your sin? Now, he may do that from time to time. He has, in fact. But not always. That's not my job. My job is to say, this is what's going to happen. What I like about what God's been doing with me is that I've been hearing the sound of a tremendous revival, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a tremendous mm -hmm. move. And I'm mm -hmm. shouting and screaming it out. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. it's almost like I'm tearing my hair out trying to convince people that <laughs> this. And you know what I find so amazing in America is that most people are skeptical about a move of God. Because they've been placed in the <coughs> passive disposition of, well, don't worry, Jesus is coming back, so don't worry about it. We'll all sit around and wait for him. And, and, and you can't do that because he's coming back for a glorious church. And so I'm hearing this. And let, let me just add one little thing, and then I'll go to you, Matthew. Uh, have a little mercy on us, Kim, because I go back to the beginnings of TBN 20, mm -hmm. almost 25 years ago now. And Kim, I have been hearing this actually since I was a child. Revival is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I've heard it is here. Well, I don't see it yet. You know. I, was, I was just watching a TBN tonight. 
<laughs> I was watching <laughs> a charisma program, yes. Stephen Strang. And he had a show on tonight on TV and talking about the incredible revival of the Holy Spirit that is going on around the world. Churches in Korea of 100,000, <laughs> 50,000, yes. 75,000. Churches in Brazil, churches in El Salvador, San Salvador, 50,000. A, a revival is breaking out in Milan Italy. among a spirit-filled Catholics. That is unbelievable. <laughs> and the revival, Manila, the Philippines, where a communist leader that was one of the communists that led the communist movement in the Philippines was saved, has started a church, and they are running thousands. Okay, now that, that is exciting, and, and that's not what I'm seeing. I'm not contradicting you because that's right. God is moving. What, are you only in the States are you talking about? No, no, about? no. I'm saying that is happening. There's revival going on in the church all the time, and it's reaching out to the, to the streets. What I'm seeing is not that specific type of revival. It is the most unusual demonstration of God's intervention and access into the world like we have never seen. So th what are you right? There's a revival happening now that has been predicted I'm 20 years self. ago. That's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We know that is happening. What I'm seeing now is another dimension of this. Wow, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I love what the prophet said there. And, and he was so generous and he said, I'm not trying to rebuke you and that's cool because the revival that is happening in the church, yes, that's going on. That's going on. But I'm seeing something very unusual. I'm seeing something different. Basically, what Kim was saying is that God is about to begin to move in areas where the church says, no, why would God do that? That's not God. Be careful. Just like I just said, we have to discern everybody. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. Because see, that's what, that's what we saw. We saw, and I'm telling you, this is what I see. I see red light districts. I'm seeing uh, 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 whore districts where the, the best whores on the planet, okay? The best whores on the planet, all of a sudden, there's a revival that's breaking out. Can you see it? Can you see it? You have to see it. I'm seeing it in Hollywood. I'm seeing it in the entertainment industry. The entertainment industry is laced with Illuminati and devil worship and, and all of this satanic mess. But God is, do you think, I, I, would, I just saw The Chosen, uh, 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 the season four. And I love when Jesus, when he took his disciples, and he was standing in front of a bell to a, a worship center, a, a tabernacle or whatever the heck you want to call it, right? He was standing there and they said, why are we here? And Jesus was saying, because this is where we need to go to cancel out death and bring life. We can't be afraid to get our feet a little bit dirty. We can't be afraid to do this. You see, so Hollywood, full of demonic activity, I see a move of God happening. I see a move of God coming up on Wall Street and in the financial districts. I see a move of God that is happening up on every mountain that the devil thinks that it still has control of. Remember when he said to Jesus, I'm going to take you up on this pinnacle. And I see all these kingdoms, they all belong to me. If you fall down and you worship me, I will give this to you. And Jesus, now this is how, man, get behind me, fool. None of this belongs to you. I am here to make sure that you understand that none of this belongs to you. I'm about to snatch this out of your hand, uh, uh, partner. So this is over. This is done with. Nothing belongs to him. Everything that is upon earth, everything that is God, that God created, belongs to God and his people. That's you and I. I see this move of God happening in schools and universities where they have determined that there is a separation of church and state. Watch and see God is going to mingle these two together again. And there is going to be a glorious move amongst the universities in the universities and colleges across this nation, in the high schools, in the junior high schools or the middle schools and the elementaries, get ready for it. Can you see it? Because if you can see it, you can enter into it and become it. And when you see entering in and become it, then the inheritance of it is yours to be passed down to the generation after you, even to the fourth generation. Guys, 
we are victorious. The fear of the Lord is at hand and we know what it's all about. The day of God is here, everybody. God is about to move. God is about to move and he has already begun to do it. So be encouraged, okay? I feel the presence of God on this so strongly right now, everybody. The presence of God is upon this very strongly. Receive this word today. Receive it, okay? Receive it because this is the hour of the day of the Lord. And we have been privileged and we have been saved. We have been anointed and appointed and now we are positioned strategically to go and reap this end time harvest. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to give right now. Information is strolling along the bottom. Along the bottom there. I'm just, I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity to sow a seed into this word. And if you are led by God, I want you to pray. I want you to pray and ask God, what is it that he wants you to sow? He may say, don't sow anything right now. He may. Who's to say what God is going to say until you ask him what it is that he wants to say. And he will speak to you. He will speak to your heart. Okay. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this word. I said right now, Father God, that we are the people that are ready. We are here. We are ready to go in your name in the fullness of all that you have sent us here to do. We are ready. So send us, Lord. Send us, Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Send us, Lord, for we are ready. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we give you thanks. In the name of your son, Yahshua. Amen and amen. So, hey. Look, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, tell other people about this channel because God is moving everybody. God is moving. Okay. Tell other people about this channel. Soon and very soon, I, I, I'm, um, I'm going to have some guests on, uh, on my broadcast here. I, I, I know this apostle from Puerto Rico and, and uh, I'm going to have him on. I'm going to have him and a prophet friend of mine. His name is James Hernandez. And he's going to translate. This man of God has a strong, powerful word, especially for the Latin community, especially for the Latin community, because you see, that was our next mission field. Kim had put together this band and we were headed to South America, to Latin America. That was our next mission field. And it's not over. It's not over. OK, it's not over. We're still going there. We're still going there. This ministry will touch Latin America, without a doubt. Okay? So I'm going to have them on my broadcast here real soon. So anyway, hey, I love you guys. Know that you're somewhere in the future and you look so much better than all this that's going on. And when J-E-S-U-S is in effect, Jesus is truly by your side. We put that devil in check. This is the Ritz. I love you guys. See you next time. Peace.